This is Dr. Vermilio. In this lecture from Kramer Chapter 6, we'll discuss speech recognition and quiet testing, also generally called speech audiometry. Speech audiometry is the evaluation of the ability to recognize speech. It may be used in some fashion to diagnose the site of lesion. Uh, for example, a cochlear site of lesion, meaning that the damage is in the cochlea, may be predicted by an audiogram to some degree. However, uh, a problem with the eighth nerve or central auditory pathway, pathway may result in significantly poor speech recognition and quiet uh, performance than predicted by the audiogram. Results may be used to validate the audiogram, make comparisons between ears, monitor speech recognition over time, and help to determine candidacy for the patient for a hearing aid of the patient for a hearing aid. There are two types of speech recognition and quiet tests. Uh, the speech reception threshold, also called the SRT, uh, this test uses an adaptive protocol to determine the lowest level where the patient correctly recognizes 50% of the word of the test words. Uh, these are two syllable words called spondees. That's a term taken from poetry. Spondee means equally stressed. Pancake, a hot dog, uh, soft ball, baseball. So the two words, the two syllables rather, are, have, uh, are supposed to have equal stress. The SRT or speech reception threshold is reported in DBHL. Now notice we said this was an adaptive protocol. All that means is that the level of each word is changed based on the response of the patient. So if the patient correctly repeats a word, then the next word is presented at a lower level. If the patient incorrectly repeats the word, or doesn't repeat the word, then the next presentation level is increased. That's called an adaptive protocol. You always see anything with a threshold is an adaptive protocol. A pure tone threshold is an adaptive protocol. A speech reception threshold uses an adaptive protocol. Later, later you'll hear about the hearing and noise test threshold or speech recognition and noise threshold that uses an adaptive protocol. There's also something called a fixed level protocol. That means every single word or if, they use, if the test uses sentences, every single sentence is presented at exactly the same level. That's called a fixed level protocol. <coughs> it's also called a supra threshold protocol, meaning that, it's, that the speech is presented above the level of the thresholds. It could be above the level of the, the pure tone average, uh, the, the pure tone average, or it could be above the level of the speech reception threshold. So a word recognition score, also called a WRS, uh, involves using a carrier phrase such as the expression, say the word, and then the word is present, presented. Say the word cat. Say the word house. Say the word dog, etc. Uh, is used with single syllable words. A fixed level, super threshold, meaning above the SRT in this case, uh, protocol is used. Uh, so all the speech sounds are presented at the same level. The word recognition score is reported in percent correct. A word recognition score might also be called uh, a speech intelligibility test. The word intelligibility in this case is a little confusing because generally when we think of the word intelligibility, uh, when, when, you th when you ask the question, how was this patient's speech intelligibility, you might be thinking, well, how well did they articulate the words? Speech, was the, the speech intelligible? Could you understand his speech or her speech? But uh, intelligibility also refers to the reception of speech. There are three ways to present speech materials. Uh, through monitored live voice, uh, using a microphone, uh, through a CD player, or another audio source such as a tape in the old days. Uh, we used tapes. Uh, MP3 player, a PC. Uh, live voice presentation is not recommended due to the high variability in the presentation levels and difficulty of the speech sounds. So monitored live voice, though unfortunately widely used today, is not recommended 
because the test results uh, may adversely be affected by the high variability in the way the voice is presented through the microphone. While if you have recorded voice and you, you obtain your norms with the recorded voice, we don't have to worry about the voice changing. Or, th or imagine this. Uh, imagine uh, a young female presenting test words to a patient, 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 <laughs> and then and then an older gentleman presents the words, uh, the, you know, the, the following month. And now the scores are slightly different. Well, did the patient's hearing change, or was it all a reflection of uh, the variety in talkers? It, that could be the case. Or what if one patient, or excuse me, one audiologist presents the words uh, one month, and then next month the audiologist has a cold. And now the, the, the audiologist is pr uh, producing the speech through monitored live vi voice uh, slightly differently. And now you see a difference in speech recognition and quiet performance. Was that due to the, because the, the patient actually had a change in hearing ability? Or was it secondary related to the, uh, the presence of a cold uh, for the audiologist? Generally, a 1000 hertz calibration tone is associated with a given set of speech materials in quiet. Uh, Kramer uh, talks about this and so does, so does Ira Hirsch. Uh, so you generally you hear a, a nice test tone at 1000 hertz and that is used to calibrate the VU meter on an audiometer and usually we'll set the VU meter to 0 dB VU. The calibration tone may be 12.5 dB above the level of the speech materials in order to allow for something called headroom for the peaks or the crest factor of the speech materials. This is done to uh, reduce the, the incidence of uh, distortion as the words are presented through the audiometer. A speech perception threshold or SRT is the level at which the patient is able to correct, uh, correctly repeat at least 50% of the speech stimuli. The stimuli in this case means uh, uh, words. Uh, the SRT measured in DBHL can provide an estimate of pure tone thresholds from 500 to 2000 Hertz. Some audiologists prefer to obtain the speech reception threshold first in order to get a rough idea of where the pure tone thresholds uh, might be. So we could take a look at uh, if the speech reception threshold is at 80 dBHL, then we're going to assume that at least some of the pure tone thresholds will not be present until we raise the, the level of the, the, the test tone to around 80 dB. When the speech uh, reception threshold and the pure tone average, or PTA, for 500, 1000, and 2000 hertz are more than 10 dB apart, we need to know why. And some possible explanations for this might include a steeply sloping audiogram, uh, language or dialect familiarity with the uh, test words, uh, there might be some calibration issues, or perhaps the patient is malingering or faking a hearing loss. Uh, traditional speech uh, recognition or, or reception threshold, the SRT is called the speech recognition threshold or it's called the speech reception threshold. Uh, uses again spondees, uh, two syllable compound words from the CID W1 word list with 36 spondees, also discussed uh, in the Ira Hirsch paper, 1981. The SRT is the lowest level for 50% word recognition ability at least 50%. Familiarization of the speech materials is conducted first. In other words, the patient is asked to repeat the test words for practice prior to the test. Uh, so uh, SRTs, to determine the SRT, we use spondees, which are two-syllable words. So we'll, we'll ask the patient, uh, repeat after me, pancake, pancake, baseball, baseball, cupcake, cupcake. So they're at least familiar with the words. Uh, there are ascending protocols, descending protocols, and bracketing protocols for obtaining this threshold. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, there is no standardization for that procedure. Uh, a speech detection threshold or a speech awareness threshold, uh, these terms may be used interchangeably. The SDT or SAT test 
is used to determine the lowest level for speech detection, not speech recognition. So the instructions would be something like this. Uh, raise your hand or push the button every time you hear something that sounds like speech. So they could hear, and you know they don't understand what's being said, but they'll say, okay, I heard something. I heard something vocal uh, through the earphones or through the sound field speakers. The SDT or SAT is usually 10, excuse me, 5 to 10 dB lower than the SRT. No familiarization is conducted prior to the test. Apparently, there's no standardized speech materials for this. The speech banana is a representation of the speech sounds at a conversational level. We discussed this before. It is used on the audiogram as a patient counseling tool. The pure tone threshold superimposed over the speech banana will show the portions of speech that will be inaudible and audible to the patient. So here's an audiogram from uh, the Kramer text, figure 6-4. There is the speech banana. Uh, a little more descriptive uh, indicators on this regarding the speech sounds. And this is average conversational speech. And we have uh, unmasked air conduction thresholds for the right ear superimposed over the speech banana and anything uh, above the level of the threshold is considered audible. We say above, look at the number line, right? So if you have a threshold at 250 hertz at 15 dB HL, which is right here, anything above the level, so 20 is above that level, 30 is above 15, 50 is above 15, anything above the level of the threshold is audible. So we're going to assume that these speech sounds will be audible to the patient. Anything below the level of the threshold, so this is uh, a 35 dB threshold at 2000 Hertz, anything below the level will be inaudible. So this is in, uh, these, uh, this will represent inaudible sounds. And notice the sounds that this patient is missing. Uh, it's missing part of the second peak of the voice fricatives and nasals and also uh, some of the voiceless fricatives. So we can use this for counseling purposes. This is very useful. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ira Hirsch and company talked about the development of speech, uh, of material for speech audiometry. Uh, again, spondaic words are used uh, for the SRT. Uh, they presented phonetically balanced lists, meaning the same speech sounds are pre represented in each test list. And uh, the speech material consists of generally familiar vocabulary. This is really important uh, when testing children. We need to ask, is the vocabulary of the test materials appropriate for this child? That must be determined. Uh, the test lists were created with speech tokens of equivalent difficulty. Speech tokens, in this case, would be the words. If it was a sentence recognition test, then the speech test, uh, tokens would be sentences. Uh, the carrier phrase is presented before each word. Say the word card, say the word house, etc. Lists were, are created to have equivalent difficulty. Why is it necessary to have lists of equivalent difficulty? Well, what if, what if we uh, delivered the words from one list to one ear and the, the list was very easy. It was very easy to hear these words. So the score was very good for the left ear. And then what if we gave list two that was a very difficult list to the right ear? And now we see that the performance with the right ear is not as good as the performance with the left ear. Well, is it because there's a true hearing difference between ears? Or is it because the, the word lists were not uh, equivalent in difficulty? And most likely it was because the word list uh, was were not equivalent in difficulty. So we need speech materials, speech uh, tests, where the word lists are equivalent in difficulty. Phonetic composition of the word lists corresponds to that of the language in normal use. Okay, that was part of this development of the speech material. Uh, there's something called the articulation index. So we're leaving the Hearst paper. Uh, originally, uh, the AI was developed by Harvey Fletcher in 1950. And in 1922, Harvey Fletcher developed the audiometer. He also, with his colleagues, determined that uh, down is up and up is down on the uh, audiogram. So 
the low level uh, thresholds will be at the top of the graph and the high level thresholds will be at the bottom of the graph and we've been uh, stuck with that arrangement ever since. Uh, French and Steinberg also worked in, uh, on this articulation index in 1947 and the AI is, is used to predict speech recognition ability. Pr uh, in particular it's used to determine the availability of the speech sounds to the patient. Uh, not unlike this uh, audiogram where we're determining the uh, the the availability of speech sounds to the patient or the audibility of various speech sounds to the patient. We, kind of, we do that to some regard, in some regard with the articulation index. So some speech frequency regions contribute more to intelligibility or speech recognition ability than others. Uh, there's something called the count the dots method uh, developed by many investigators and this is used to estimate the AI. Uh, Chaz Pavlovic in 1988 published a paper uh, where he presented a method that uses audiometric thresholds to calculate the AI. An AI of 1 indicates 100% audibility of the speech information. An AI of 0.5 indicates that only 50% of the speech information is audible or available, etc. Kramer uses the terms AI and SII, or Speech Intelligibility Index, interchangeably. Uh, Larry Humes published a paper uh, uh, with the count the dot method. So each dot contributes 3% to speech recognition. Notice that there is a greater collection of dots in the higher frequencies. This is representative of the uh, contribution of the higher frequencies to speech uh, uh, understanding or speech recognition versus the lower frequencies. So it appears that the higher frequency information is more important for speech recognition ability in this case. There's a total of 33 dots, and the task is simply to count the number of dots equal to or above the level of the threshold and calculate the audibility of speech. So if you added, if you counted all the dots, you could determine the AI. Uh, now, we did this in a study uh, presented at the American Academy of Audiology in 2006. And this is also from the paper that we published in 2012. Uh, we had 215 subjects, and we used uh, the AI method uh, of calc the, the method to calculate AI from Chaz Pavlovic's paper uh, on subjects with normal pure tone thresholds and groups with varying degrees of high frequency hearing loss. So we had a group with normal pure tone thresholds. Uh, it was actually 15 dB HL or more, according to the scheme that we used. A slight loss a mild loss, a moderate loss, a severe loss, and a profound loss. And notice, as we would predict, if you had audiometric thresholds all within normal limits, actually 15 dB or better, most of the speech uh, uh, frequency content would be available or audible to the patient. So the AI is close to one, so that means close to 100% of the speech signal is available to the patient. Whereas for folks with a severe loss, you can find uh, individuals who have uh, just over 60% of the speech available, just over 60, an AI of 0.6 available to the patient, or you could actually find individuals who have uh, a large, uh, <laughs> a very high uh, amount of the speech information is available, uh, over 90%, around 95% for an AI, AI of 0.95. Now, how could this be? This person and this person both have a high frequency hearing loss. But it could be that this person has normal uh, pure tone thresholds in the low frequencies and in the high frequencies uh, from, say, 2,000 through 8,000 hertz, all of those thresholds are in the severe range, whereas maybe the person over here on the far right, maybe just maybe all the thresholds are within normal limits. Uh, however, one uh, threshold at one frequency is in the severe range. So, that, so you could visualize uh, the speech banana with an audiogram like that, and that would indicate that most of the speech is available to the patient, even though the patient is considered to have a severe high frequency hearing loss. Okay, so it is clear from this figure that individuals with moderate, severe, and profound high frequency pure tone losses may have a wide range of AIs from 0.6 Point nine. This is due to the variability in the audiometric configuration across the subjects. 
the most comfortable level and the uncomfortable loudest level. So remember, we have the SRT, which is the threshold of speech recognition ability. Uh, the MCL now is a comfortable listening level. And basically, we can present uh, running speech or music to the patient and just say, you know, uh, you know, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the level of the of the uh, of the speech that you're listening to, and I'm going to adjust the dial until you say that's the most comfortable listening level. In other words, we ask the patient to adjust the level of the speech that they hear through the earphones or through the uh, speakers in order to achieve a level that they would use, for example, with the television or with the radio. The UCL is different. That's the level where the speech is uncomfortable. So we could ask the patient, you know, by the numbers, tell us the level of the speech. Is it a three, which means uh, it's soft, but I, you know, I can hear okay, uh, or a four, which means it's, you know, it's sort of moderately loud, a five, where it's it's loud, a six, which might mean it's like very loud, but I can stand it, and a seven, which means forget about it, it's too loud. So. We can determine the level of the SRT, the MCL, and the UCL. All of these measures are reported in DBHL, and the range from the SRT to the UCL for speech would represent the patient's dynamic range. And this information is very important when we program uh, hearing aids. Here is a figure uh, 610 from the Kramer text on the dynamic range. And you see that the dynamic range from the SRT through the UCL for one patient who has normal pure tone thresholds, the dynamic range is actually relatively large. Uh, it's 90 dB. So from the softest sound that they can hear in speech to the loudest uh, level that they're willing to tolerate for speech is 90 dB. For conductive loss, remember there's a, there's a pure tone threshold loss and a conductive component. Now the SRT is elevated because we have this hearing loss. Uh, and the UCL is actually beyond the limits of the audiometer. It's actually greater than 120 dBHL. So the uh, dynamic range is actually greater than uh, 80 dB in this case. And it could be 90 uh, dB, just like it is for the, the person with a, a normal uh, pure tone thresholds. Now look at this example of a person with a uh, with damage in the cochlea. So they have a sensory neural loss. Specifically, if it's in the loss, it would be considered a sensory loss, we could say. Um, and look at the SRT is elevated because of the, the loss. And the UCL is where the, where the UCL is for the person with uh, normal pure tone thresholds. So this dynamic range is very small. It's only 30 dB. So now we're going to take the sounds that a person would normally hear uh, with normal hearing would hear in a 90 dB range from the softest sounds to the loudest sounds that they could tolerate. We have to squeeze all that information into this very very narrow range uh, of 30 dB. That's highly problematic. And look at the MCL is right around 80 dBHL and we raise the sound just a little bit higher only 10 dB up to 90 dBHL. Now we're at the end of the dynamic range and we're very close to uh, presenting sounds that are that are uncomfortable for the patient. So we would use something called compression to compress the signals so it decreases the differences between the softest sounds and the loudest sounds. And we would compress that and put that into the patient's dynamic range. Unfortunately, when you add a lot of compression to a sound, while it sounds great on guitar, uh, it can wreak havoc with one's ability to understand speech. Okay, uh, super threshold speech recognition testing. Uh, we use single words used to obtain a speech recognition score or a word recognition score. It's also called a speech intelligibility score. Or it might be called a speech discrimination score. All, all those things mean the same thing. All those terms mean the same thing. There are word lists uh, called the CIDW22 word list and the NU6 are commonly used for this test. The NU6 words were used by uh, Richard Wilson in 2007 uh, when he created his words in noise test or the wind test. Uh, PB means phonetically balanced. 
and the word lists are constructed to reflect the frequency of occurrence for different speech sounds as they no normally occur in daily language. So in this case, phonetically balanced means that the speech sounds represented within the test have the same frequency of occurrence as they do for uh, daily language usage. And a carrier phrase is used, uh, say the word car, say the word house. Super threshold speech uh, recognition testing uses a fixed level protocol, so that means we're not going to change the level of the words based on the patient's response. Uh, so a fixed level protocol is used to present the words at a constant level throughout the test. The score is reported as percent of correctly repeated words. The presentation level may be described in sensation level, dB, SL, ray the SRT. So 30 dB SL ray the SRT means that the words for the super threshold uh, fixed level test, also known as a word recognition test or a speech discrimination test, will be presented 30 dB above the speech perception threshold. Example, if the speech perception threshold is 30 dB HL, meaning that is the lowest level where the patient correctly repeats uh, two-syllable words called spondy words at least 50% of the time, that's the SRT, then the word recognition test, the super threshold fixed level protocol, would be presented at a level 60 dB during the word recognition test. So 30 dB SL, rate the SRT, that just means we're going to add 30 dB to the speech perception threshold. If the speech perception threshold is 30, we add 30 to that, and now the presentation level is 60 dB. So we'll present the words at 60 dB and record the number of correctly or the percent of correctly repeated words. Word recognition uh, scored is WRS. There are 25 word lists and there are 50 word lists. As the number of test tokens or test words are decreased, the test variability increases, meaning that large differences between scores may occur in order to have a statistically significant difference between test results. Uh, we have the presentation level will note that the presentation level will affect the speech recognition and quiet performance. A 50 dB HL fixed presentation level may be useful to show how well a patient hears at a conversational speech level. So conversational speech is considered to be uh, approximately uh, at 50 dB HL and we can present the words at 50 dB HL to a patient that has, say for example, a high frequency hearing loss, and we can use that for counseling purposes. And you can say, sir, when words are presented at a normal conversation level, you only understood 44% of the words. But when we elevate the words, and then we can conduct the test again at say 80 dB HL, we, when we present the, the words with uh, an amplification, so we're, we're playing the words 30 dB above this, you understood 98% of the words. So this shows you that with amplification, you should have an uh, increased ability to recognize speech presented in quiet. Now high test levels, uh, for example 90 dB HL, may be used to look for distortion in the auditory system that is associated with an eighth uh, nerve site of lesion. This could be representative of a, an acoustic neuroma or a vestibular schwannoma, those terms are used interchangeably, and that is a, a tumor on the eighth nerve. Several levels may be tested to obtain something called a performance intelligibility function. It's also called a performance intensi intensity function. In order to understand speech recognition ability across the patient's dynamic range and to determine the levels for maximum speech recognition ability. Here is a PI function, performance intensity function, uh, provided in Kramer, uh, figure 612. And you can see that when the words, this is the presentation level of the words. Uh, this is uh, two patients, or you can think of it as two ears. This is a normal uh, ear. This is a, a, an ear that has damage to some respect in the cochlea. So this would be called a sensory neural loss, specifically if the damage is only in the cochlea, that would be called a sensory loss. When the words are presented at 0 dB HL to a patient with uh, normal hearing, the word recognition score is 
zero percent correct. Really difficult to hear anything at zero dBHL. Okay, when the words are presented now at 10 dBHL, the patient now hears uh, closer to 30 percent of the words. When the presentation level is elevated to 20 dBHL, the patient recognizes close to 80 percent of the words. When the words are presented at 30 dBHL, the patient understands closer to 100 percent of the words and then at 40 dBHL, the, the patient understands 100% of the words. The lowest level where the patient uh, gets the best performance is considered the PB max. Remember that, PB max. Uh, now notice over here for this patient that has damage in the cochlea, when the words are presented at 30 dBHL, the patient doesn't understand anything. 0% correct. But our patient that has uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a normal auditory function, they understood close to 100% of the words. So that's a huge difference between the patients. Uh, and as we increase the level, we have increased performance. And then this is the best performance that we saw. So this would be PB max. Notice that this should not say 100%. That, this is an error in the textbook. PB max should actually be 80% because, see, uh, at 80 dB HL, the performance, the best performance was at 80%. So this, the, the lowest level with the best performance is actually 80 dB for a PB max that equals 80% correct. Uh, these are commonly used uh, categories to describe word recognition performance. Uh, degree of impairment when the patient understands 90 to 100 percent of the words is considered none. Uh, word recognition ability is considered excellent or normal uh, when only 89 to 75 percent of the words are understood or correctly repeated. We say that's a slight loss, etc. Now this is not related to any type of norms. This is something used by convention. So. Uh, and also, if the words were presented through a sound field speaker, uh, it gets really difficult to make comparisons across test sites because the norms for, uh, for speech recognition testing with a sound field speaker can be uh, significantly different depending on the furniture in the room or the placement of a window. So this, this is actually a real crude way to describe uh, word recognition performance. It is not related to the norms, but it's commonly used in audiology today. Is there a significant difference between word recognition scores? Well, Thornton and Raffin uh, produced the paper in 1978. Also, there's a, an updated article uh, from another author or another set of authors uh, discussed in the Kramer text, but I want you to know about this Thornton and Raffin paper. The variability of scores decreases as the number of tokens or words presented increases. So the question is, when is a difference between scores statistically significant or real? Imagine if you had um, a, a test, a word recognition score, uh, and you're sitting in a sound field, so you're listening to, to the words through a speaker, you get a certain score. And now you're tested again with a hearing aid, and you get a different score. And the question is, when will you have a statistically significant uh, difference in word recognition ability between the unaided and aided conditions? So if the unaided condition uh, word recognition score was 76% and the aided word recognition score was 79%, was that statistically significant? Uh, in other words, uh, another way to look at that is, is, is that difference big enough for me to, to want to shell out a whole lot of money? for this hearing aid, which can cost thousands of thousands of dollars. Uh, also see Kramer text, uh, the Kramer text page 199, table 6-4. But I, I want you, uh, for the exam, hint, hint, I want you to know the Thornton and Raffin paper, uh, table 29-4. Specifically know this. This is the caption from Thornton and Raffin, 1978, uh, table 29-4. Uh, it's uh, the caption reads lower and upper limits of the 95 percent critical differences for percentage scores values within the range shown are not significantly different from the values shown in the percentage score column and all that means is that 
let's say if uh, with the unaided with the unaided um, test the score was 40 percent uh, it says score for one year it says score for the other year we can also talk about it in terms of that but let's stick with our hearing aid analogy so the patient's score is 40 percent without the hearing aid with the 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 the, the hearing aid, the patient scores 90%. Oh, that's a nice improvement, right? Well, uh, it depends on the number of words, which is this N equals 10. So there is 10 words in this list. The patient uh, understood 40% of the words without the hearing aid, 90% of the words with the hearing aid. Is that a statistically significant difference? Well, it says values within the range shown are not significantly different from the value shown in the percentage score column. This is not significantly different from this. So we could not say, wow, yeah, you should actually buy this hearing aid because it's really helping you. Mostly because, look at this, we used a, a very uh, low number of words in our word list. Now, if we used uh, 25 word lists, then um, and the patient scored 40% without the hearing aid, 90% with the hearing aid, is that statistically uh, different if the words uh, were from a 25 word list or we presented rather a 25 word list well according to our, our uh, caption here it says values within the range shown are not significantly different from the values shown in the percentage score column but the values outside of this range are significantly different 40 would be outside of this range from 68 to 96 in that case yes it would be statistically a significant difference and we could say, well, sorry, man, that's a statistically significant difference. Not that they would care. We could say, you know, it looks like the hearing aid is actually do, doing you some real good. And then we could do the same for 50 word lists. So that, in essence, is what I want you to know from the Thornton and Raffin paper from 1978. In particular, uh, know this table 29.4. And these words can go on. So this is just one row from a very long row of, of uh, values that we have for uh, 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 significant um, or, or, or ranges that are not significant from the uh, primary score. Okay, uh, let's see. Differential diagnosis of cochlear versus eighth nerve pathology. A PI, PB function, PI is percent intelligibility or, or, or performance intensity function. Uh, PB means phonetically balanced words were used. Function may be obtained to obtain the PB max, best word recognition score, and the PB min, worst uh, recognition score at levels above the PB max. We just talked about this. There's something called the rollover ratio, which is PB max minus PB min, develop, uh, excuse me, <laughs> developed, uh, divided by the PB max. And if that equals something greater than uh, 0.35, we, we, we're calling that again the rollover ratio. If it's, if it's greater than 0.35, we may have a condition that is associated with an eighth nerve pathology. For example, an acoustic neuroma or a vestibular schwannoma. The patient should be referred uh, for a follow-up. Now, now, this is not a uh, an indication that the patient definitely has a tumor. It's an indication that there might be a problem and that we should have refer the patient for further evaluation. The patient should be referred for a follow-up with uh, an ear, nose, and throat physician for an MRI or an ABR, auditory brainstem response testing, for site of lesion uh, to confirm the presence or absence of an eighth nerve pathology, such as an acoustic neuroma, which is a tumor on the eighth nerve. So again, this is our, our PI function. Uh, for somebody that has a cochlear hearing loss, they're calling it here which means a sensory neural loss where the damage is in the sensory organ or the cochlea. That's uh, subject A. Okay, so as we increase the level, this is level on the x-axis, percent correct on the y-axis, as we increase the level, we see an increase in performance, and then we actually see a slight decrease, but we don't see a significant de decrease here. And now we look at the eighth nerve, uh, so somebody who has maybe an acoustic neuroma, as we increase the level, we see an increase in performance, this is the best performance, that's PB max. And then uh, as we increase the level, now we see the effects of some sort of distortion through the auditory system. Word recognition performance actually decreases. Uh, so we have 80% 80, 80 uh, 
recognition over here at PB Max, and now we're down to uh, somewhere around 53% uh, correct. So there was a decrease in word recognition ability as the, the presentation levels increased. Again, each of these dots represents word recognition uh, performance for a list of words. And these can be short lists or long lists, okay? And then the rollover, uh, uh, rollover ratio is calculated as PB max minus the PB min, and that uh, quantity is divided by the PB max, and that's what we have here. We're looking for a value uh, greater than 0.35. This is not greater than 0.35, so we're not really going to be concerned about that. We're not really going to uh, refer this patient for uh, testing for a retrocochlear site of lesion, as we would call it. Uh, but this patient right here has a rollover ratio of 0.38, so that's a way to, to quantify uh, this, the difference between these two scores. This is PB min, excuse me. This is the lowest word performance, the level of the, the lowest word performance above the level of the PB max. That's what PB min is. Okay, plug in the numbers, and if it gets to be, if the, the result is 0.35 or greater, then we'll refer uh, for retrocochlear or after the cochlea, meaning the nerve or the brainstem uh, site of lesion testing. Okay, and that's what I just said. You can copy, uh, pause this recording and write this down if you like. Okay, and that's our lecture for today on word recognition in quiet testing.